sport automobile, on va se bousculer sur les pistes d'Afrique. Le Paris-Dakar va quitter la capitale le 1er janvier. De nombreux équipages régionaux seront au départ avec une belle soif d'aventure. C'est l'épreuve la plus longue du monde, plus de 10 000 km, la plus insolite en traversant des contrées retirées, en réunissant aussi à la fois des autos, des motos et des camions. Tout au loin, Uber Oriol et sa BMW. La moto numéro 100 fonce vers la victoire. I pulled into the loft and he right away was so welcoming and there was so much of his old gear around that you instantly just went into storytelling mode and I just feel like we connected right away and it was comfortable immediately. Can I put it on? Of course. <laughs> wow. Oh, I might have to take so this fun. one home. I got a real emotion when I saw the R90 Urban GS for the first time because it reminded me so much things, you know, a, a white BMW with those motorsport colors. That meant a lot of things for me because that was exactly what I've been experiencing 30 years ago when I've been racing, you know. Coming back to the heritage, to the spirit of the beginning, that's really great. <laughs> It's probably one of the cooler things to have you bear as a guide here in Dakar. On one hand, you're seeing Dakar and you're taking in this whole new continent for me for the first time, but then you're also hearing all these incredible stories from years worth of experiences piled up in you bear's life is incredible. We happened upon the, you know, Independence Plaza. I hadn't realized that they did the final podium and finale at this plaza. The first year when we arrived in Dakar, the prize giving was the Place de l'Independence, which is the main place in Dakar. And we were so proud because it was crowded, absolutely crowded. It took maybe three or four hours to get there and to get out of it. That's also part of the story, you know. We stopped and chatted for a bit. Of course, everyone sees the motorcycle and is asking, Paré Dakar, you know, they connected, I think, to that rally. So many people have that history with it. Pink Lake for me has been the most magical of the trip. There was just this immediate calmness around that area. When we first rode through, just seeing all the small huts and the people there and they're tending to their gardens and everything, it was just such a different scene than we're seeing in Dakar. So many less people and they seem to be really just passionate about that connection to nature. They're right there on the lake, they're right there by the sea. It was incredible. Being on the beach where they finished was so cool for me. I mean, I feel like I had goosebumps just that whole time because we're rallying over these dunes in this big truck and Hubert's just beaming. He's so excited to tell me. You can hear like the adrenaline in his voice even. For him just to be on the sand going, 
right there. It was right. I got the BMW flag. I ran down the beach. You know, it's just unreal to hear the stories and to be there with him. In 1981, when I won the race the first time, somebody stopped me slightly before the finish, you know, and gave me a flag. I finished the race waving my BMW flag. I was proud to win the race. And it was so crowded, you know, for me, it was the first time I experienced that. Having everybody cheering you. Hello, congratulations. Oh, yeah, he's the winner. He's the winner. I mean, that's something you, you cannot forget, you know. We did have a fun camp out and we had a great conversation. You know, hearing his stories about camping through the rally was pretty gnarly. We had a handful of local guys there with us and it was so neat to get to interact with them. And there's, you know, some language barrier there, but once they realized that Hubert was part of the Perry Dakar, they were just wide eyed and I think a little starstruck. One of them was saying, you know, from when he was little, he would go and he remember watching the race finish, which judging by his age, it was probably right around the time Hubert was winning. So that was pretty cool. For me, it's a really nice moment to share all those adventures I've been spending in Dakar. Joy is looking at that with new eyes, you know, so it's nice to tell her the story and all those moments, all those places are so full of emotion. So even 30 years later, it's the same. I think if I have to go back, what was the strongest for me is when I understood that I was going to win the first time. I was on my bike, on the road, going to Dakar, so we had still a 200 k's to go. But I knew at this moment that it was done, my life had changed, that I was going to win. And this moment was so strong, I will never forget it. I can see that for Hubert, it's less about the accomplishments and it's less about finishing the race and being a star and all the ladies love him. It's that moment, you know, you bookmark these moments throughout your life that move you. And it's probably what continues to drive us is you're constantly looking for those moments. I want to say that the legacy Hubert leaves behind is one of living an adventurous life, being spontaneous, finding what moves you and driving towards that. And I think it can be even outside of Motorsports, whether you're on two wheels or four or not involved in it at all. It's just about being driven by emotion. I think since the very beginning, what's the most exciting for me of riding a motorcycle is freedom. As soon as you get on a bike, you feel freedom. Riding a bike, you know, you're so exposed to the elements. You're on your own in a lot of ways. You're experiencing things in your own mind and, you know, for your own self. But, gosh, you see so much more. And I think people are drawn to bikes because they elicit some kind of an emotion. For me, a big part of the bikes is the history that comes with them. For example, having these Dakar bikes and being able to tie that to Hubert and learn more about it. Uh, I guess for me then, being able to meet him, it, it kind of ties the whole thing up with the boat. Thank you.